with the rug having been firmly pulled out from under me, it was bound to happen sooner or later. V had done all she could. Hell, who was I kidding? She'd done more for me in just a few days than anyone since I'd been 12 years old. But reality weighed on us more and more with each passing day. Eddie's. We needed Eddie's if we were going to keep ourselves off the street, and since I was fresh out of a job, that put all the burden on V's shoulders, as if she needed more to worry about. She was nervous to leave me alone, dragging out her goodbyes, even making me promise to call her if anything happened or if I started feeling down. But the time inevitably came when she finally had to drag herself to the door and step back out into the world. I was jealous. Night City shone brightly under the hot sun, staring back at me from the window just as it always had. But I no longer felt like a part of it. Instead, my entire life was now encapsulated by the four walls surrounding me. There was comfort to be found within them, even after V left. But with nothing more than my thoughts to keep me company, I'd finally been forced to deal with the questions that had been racing through my mind. Who was I? Why hadn't I said something sooner? When would I get better? Where would I start? How could I figure any of this shit out when I was so screwed up already? The answers eluded me, as they always had. Unlike before, however, I didn't push the questions away. Didn't turn to whatever distraction seemed the most attractive, whether it could be found under the wreath or at the bottom of a bottle. Instead, I busied myself with any mundane task I could find. Shit, it was all I could do since V had accidentally robbed me of my wreath when she'd left. She had tossed a bunch of her old shit into a box to sell at the local pawn store and had thrown it in by mistake. Fortunately, she called me back not long after I messaged her and promised to bring it back to me. So, tidying up the apartment, tinkering with the doll chips, and catching up on the latest scream sheets became the order of the day. And all the while, I kept thinking pondering the same questions, even though I kept coming up short on answers. V had told me she wouldn't be back until late in the evening, so it was a surprise when she walked back through the door just a few short hours later, cheeks rosy and eyes wet as they often were from soaring along the streets on her motorcycle. Hey, I called out when she walked in. What are you doing back so early? V kicked her boots off and stepped into the kitchen, sniffling as she poured herself a glass of water from the sink. I caught sight of the wreath in her hand and breathed a small sigh of relief. Got the gig wrapped up quick. It was pretty lame. It was on the west side of the city. That's good, I said. It was good, and the fact that I wasn't suspicious of her motives must have meant I was doing something right. Didn't it? V gulped the last of her water down and took a deep breath before turning to face me. There was a mischievous glint in her still bloodshot eyes. I brought your wreath back, she said, holding it up proudly. Not that you'll be needing it tonight. I got a little something special planned for us. My anxiety quickly spiked. The sweat blossomed from my palms as I tried to think of what crazy idea V had thought of now. W would it be another quiet night in, heating up a bowl of popcorn before splaying out across the couch and falling asleep while watching a movie? Or was V planning to drag me back to the greatest heights of Night City? decked out in the most glamorous apparel to mingle with the rest of the corpo elite. Uh, okay, so, um, you gonna give me a hint? I asked. Or are you planning to keep me in the dark? V smiled and sat next to me on the couch. It's nothing big, but it ain't exactly small either. We'd need to go out, but I swear it won't be anything fancy. You can wear what you've got on, just like me. My shoulders relaxed with the knowledge I wouldn't need to change out of the orange tank top I was wearing. While I liked it, the giant demon printed on the front wouldn't go over well at any place with actual standards. V was still wearing those ass-hugging jeans of hers and a blue top that covered more of her skin than I was accustomed to, but still complimented her toned form. I want to keep it a secret as long as I can, V said, noticing the subtle hint of apprehension behind my eyes. But if you really want me to tell you, I really wasn't feeling up for much mystery. The last time I'd ventured out into the city, it had been an absolute disaster, 
and I had found myself sitting in the tub with a razor in my hand and blood streaming from my wrist. But everything had gone to shit that night, and it was hard to believe that something like that would happen again, especially if V was with me. No, I said, I'll play along. You said nothing fancy, V shook her head, and only if you're up for it, Jude. I'm perfectly fine snuggling up on the couch with you, swiping all the popcorn while I make you watch another masterpiece of mine that'll probably bore you to tears. Honestly, your art is incredible, but you've got shitty taste in culture. She'd offered it up to me, almost as if it were bait. We could stay in and relax, and not go back out there. I really wanted to give in and tell V she'd hit the nail on the head. Night City was terrifying. Every time I went out there, I got hurt. And I knew that was the point V was trying to get across. Trying to make me feel normal again, aren't you? V's smile didn't falter, though her eyes resembled those of a kid who'd just been caught with their hand in a cookie jar. She drew a deep breath. <sighs> yeah, I am. No lies. I want to show you that things can be normal and that there's still plenty of good shit to feel out there. I had to look around for a bit to find some of it, but it was just a thought. Okay, I nodded. I'm game. You sure? V asked, tilting her head skeptically. Realizing I was about to dive in and commit myself to whatever V had planned for us, I tightened my jaw. I said so, didn't I? Besides, I'm curious to see what you've cooked up for us this time. Is that so? V mused. Well, let's just say I'm sure you're gonna get a thrill out of it. A thrill? That didn't give me much to work with, but since I didn't have to get changed, when would we need to leave? I asked. V checked the time on her hollow. Well, it's almost four now. We could head out whenever you're ready. In fact, we should probably get a move on now since we've got a bit of a drive ahead of us. All right, give me a few minutes to get ready. I stood and cast a suspicious glance at V as I walked into the bathroom. When I ducked my head back around the corner, she still had that shit-eating grin on her face. It seemed like a waste of time putting makeup on. More than that, it felt like a betrayal of what I was trying to do with V. How was I being honest with her, with everyone around me, with myself? by dolling my face up with eyeliner and makeup to look prettier than I actually was. It was a lie, and that was something I wasn't supposed to do anymore. But V would be with me, and old habits tended to die hard. I knew she would have agreed the whole ritual was pointless. Maybe that's why I put it on, because she wouldn't care if I did or not. I could choose. It was fucking maddening trying to figure all this shit out. I ignored the sultry whistle when I stepped out of the bathroom and began to throw my shoes and jacket on. V joined me, and together, we ventured outside. She caught me by surprise when she asked for the keys to my van, but since this whole thing was her idea, I handed them over and hopped in the passenger seat. V hadn't been kidding around when she said it would be a long drive. Even after hopping on the freeway, we were still battling against the rush hour and crawling along the congested roadways. For a moment, I thought she was taking me back to Laguna Bend until I remembered we'd left the diving gear behind. With no clue where we were going, I sat back and put myself in V's hands. But after an hour had passed, I was starting to have second thoughts. Not much longer, V sighed, running a hand through her hair. We should have waited till all the corpos got home. The setting sun cast a brilliant pink glow that was befitting of Pacifica. The southernmost district was the perfect embodiment of Night City, a mouth-watering oasis of palm trees and spectacular high-rises festering with rot just beneath the surface. There were still a few scattered pockets where the badges claimed to be in control, though everyone knew that the voodoo boys were the real law. Where are you taking us? I finally asked, glancing warily at the clusters of homeless dwellers grouped around the alleyways. Almost there, was all V said. As we rounded Potomac Street, my fingers were itching to grab the wheel. 
I was about to give in and suggest we turn around when I caught sight of a brilliant glow reflecting off the nearby ocean. When we rounded the corner, I caught sight of what had to be our destination. Holy shit, I exclaimed. When did they open all this back up? V smiled, her eyes remaining fixed on the road ahead of us as she searched for a parking space. It's only going to be around for a couple of weeks, and then they're shutting it back down. A at least that's what I heard. Probably some baby-kissing hag trying to scrounge up a few votes to make aldermen or something. I didn't care what the reason was. The memories of the last time V and I had come here were still fresh in my mind. So fresh, in fact, that it felt like it had only been yesterday. But I knew it was much longer than that. Our relationship was still in its infancy when I'd invited V to the boardwalk and dragged her onto that insane roller coaster that stretched across the beach. She had screamed her fucking lungs off and left a bruise on my arm the next day from how tightly she'd grabbed onto me. But I'd welcomed the pain, having finally gotten a glimpse of the woman behind the murk. Bullets, knives, blows to the head. I'd never seen V bat an eye at any of them, but apparently... None of those held a candle to the sheer horror a few twists and turns could wreak. She had managed not to blow chunks all over the place, though the kids who'd sat behind us, half her size and even less her age, had laughed their asses off and how green her face had turned. Shit, so had I. How could I not? Some badass she'd turned out to be. Even with the windows up, I could still hear the faint roar of the coaster zooming along the track chased by a chorus of happy screams quickly fading into the distance. A thick crowd shuffled between long rows of tents the vendors had set up shop nearby, and I didn't care if my brain was making it up or not. I could actually smell the heavenly aroma of funnel cakes wafting through the air vents. V finally found a small gap on the side of the road she could wedge the van into. Once she had turned off the engine... I went to step outside when V stopped me. Hey, are you sure this is okay? What do you mean? I mean, are you okay being around this many people? I, I didn't realize it would be this crowded, and I'm starting to feel like I might have sprung this on you. I looked back at the boardwalk. There had to be thousands of people out there, smiling, laughing, basking in a few hours of blissful respite before Night City tightened its grip on them once more. But perhaps getting lost in the crowd, in all of that happiness, even if it was an illusion, might actually help. As much as I'd railed against being part of the system, I still craved that connection, even after everything that had happened. No, I said, turning back to V. It's all right. But you know what we're going to have to do, right? I smiled as V's eyes flooded with apprehension though I saw something else flicker behind them as well, but I couldn't place what it was. What is it? She groaned. With a wink, I threw the door open. Judging from all the badges we saw patrolling the grounds, V probably wasn't far off the mark. Whoever had popped for all this hadn't pulled any punches on security. The music grew louder as we approached and was soon joined by the sounds of cheering and laughter. Laughter. A chill suddenly shot up my spine, causing me to pull my jacket tightly over my shoulders and cross my arms. V stopped. What is it? It's nothing. I'm fine. Let's just... Shit. I sighed and looked back at the masses of smiling faces. V rested a steadying hand on my back. Why did this have to happen now? Don't do this, Jude. Tell me what's going on. V... I shook my head in disappointment at myself. It's, it's the laughing. I, I, I know it's the happy kind and all, but it's, it's still fucking hard to hear. Like, they're all laughing at me. V spun on her heels and started to guide me toward the van. Come on, we're going home. A single step was all I managed before I planted my feet firmly onto the ground. What the hell was I supposed to do? Crawl back inside of myself every time someone laughed at a joke? Every time V laughed because of some stupid meme that popped up on her social feed? Every time I laughed? 
the world wasn't going to wait for me. I had to go back out there, even if for no other reason than to prove to myself that I could. If not, then I would be stuck in this awful in-between for the rest of my life, and I knew I couldn't live like that. No, I declared. We're gonna walk the whole fucking thing, and I'm gonna drag you on that coaster again and listen to you scream your tits off. Because I want to. I held her gaze defiantly as she studied me, trying to decide if I was sincere or putting on an act. Finally, she hooked her arm into my own. Fine. But only because you're asking so nicely. It wasn't easy. All I could focus on as we worked our way through the crowd was the chorus of laughter that surrounded me, even flinching when a young girl ran past us. It was embarrassing. But the more we blended into the sea of faces, the more the sound was drowned out until, finally, I'd achieved an acceptable level of comfort. Not the carefree attitude I'd hoped for, but at least I wasn't fixated on it anymore. V, on the other hand, was progressing in the exact opposite direction as we approached the line for the roller coaster that loomed before us. Her steps slowed, and she took to stalling by playing games or to darting inside a tent to see what was being sold. It didn't bother me since I knew it wasn't easy to face one's fears, and I couldn't blame her for procrastinating, but she was clearly struggling by the time we got in line, staring up at the steel structure we would soon be climbing with growing anxiety. V? Hmm? V replied, her eyes fixed on the carts which had just departed the station. What are you doing? V blinked and looked at me. What? We really don't have to go on this thing, even though I love to see you shit your pants again. I'm not going to be angry at you for it, I promise. I told you I was going to go on it, and that's that. V heaved a sigh and grit her teeth. <sighs> fuck. Why was she so hellbent on going on this stupid ride? She seemed to care about it more than I did which didn't make a damn bit of sense. Before long, the carts returned to the station filled with shocked, windblown riders who'd laughed amongst themselves, chattering maniacally to one another about how wild the ride had been. After they got off, the line shuffled forward and the group ahead of us began to board. We would be next. I decided to give her one last chance to back out and tugged at her arm. V, I'm doing it, V said defiantly, drawing snickers from a couple standing behind us. It's all gonna be over in less than a minute anyway. The fucking thing doesn't even go that high. All right, I shrugged. If that was what V needed to tell herself to get through it, then fair enough. But she had to know she was deluding herself. It took several minutes before the carts returned. Her skin had turned pale as a ghost when the harnesses released and the gates opened, allowing us to board. Once I had sat down and pulled the restraints over my shoulders, giving them a firm tug to make sure they were secure, I glanced over at V and had to bite my lip to keep myself from bursting out into laughter. Her teeth were actually chattering, and her knuckles had turned ghostly white as she gripped onto the harness as if her life depended on it. And we weren't even moving yet. This was even worse than the last time we'd been on the ride, probably because she knew what was in store for her. As amusing as this was, I couldn't let her do this to herself. Come on, V. Let's get you off this thing before it's too late. You know they won't stop it once it leaves the station. Yeah, I know, V muttered, her jaw still trembling. That's the whole reason I dragged us onto this fucking thing in the first place. My brow narrowed. The whole reason? What was she talking about? Why wouldn't she just... My heart fluttered in my chest as I suddenly realized what V was doing. How had I not seen it? It was quite possibly the sweetest and cleverest thing she'd ever done for me. Ignoring the pair of guys running alongside the track performing a final check on the restraints so no one would end up splattered on the ground, I held my hand out to her. I appreciate what you're trying to do for me, V. V glanced at me, an eyebrow raised. And what am I trying to do exactly, besides give myself a fucking heart attack? You're trying to show me that you trust me. And that I can trust you too. 
V released her death grip from the restraint and took my hand. Her skin was cold as ice, but the smile on her face radiated warmth. You got me on both counts. I trust you're not gonna let me piss myself or barf all over the place. She swallowed hard. I'm literally in your hands, Judy. A sudden hiss from underneath us caused V's grip to tighten. She squeezed my hands so tightly that her nails dug into the flesh of my palms. I winced, but didn't dare to release my grip as the ride jolted forward and set off on its long ascent. It was a fucked up ritual. Me always walking off the ride with some mark from V, but it was one born out of love. Can't promise you're not gonna spray chunks everywhere, I said, smiling at the girl in front of us who had suddenly spun around, or that you're not gonna leave a puddle on the seat but you can trust me to hold your hand the whole time. That's all I wanted. The wind was blowing our hair wildly about as we rose higher into the air. For a moment, a few rogue strands brushed across V's, and I was reminded of what Rita had called us. The Cotton Candy Couple. Even though it would be short-lived, I allowed myself a moment to take in the incredible view of the skyline. Sh shit I glanced at V with a wide grin on my face. You didn't think this through all the way, did you? <laughs> you know me, V said, her voice trembling in fear. <laughs> when do I ever? I laughed and turned my attention to the track ahead of us. From the ground, it didn't seem like it reached all that high into the sky. But from up here... Can't believe I'm doing this again, V suddenly cried out. You always said you were a gunk. We were nearing the top and the carts ahead of us began to arc out of view as they stretched across the peak. But even over the commotion and clattering of the wheels rolling along the track, I could still hear V gulp in fear. Judy? I squeezed her hand. Trust me, I will. Oh, fuck. My bones rattled as gravity took over and wrenched us down the hill. The ground rushed up to meet us, and we banked away at the last second, the sudden shift in angle nearly turning us upside down before climbing up another hill. V was screaming at the top of her lungs with every twist and turn, my knuckles having become her stress ball. She had closed her eyes, probably in the vain hope that doing so would cause the ride to steady itself and slow to a leisurely crawl. Meanwhile, Tears were leaking out of the corners of my own, even as my cheeks threatened to burst with how wide the grin on my face was. I barely had time to see it coming. Oh shit! What? V shouted. What is it? But it was too late to warn her. Hang on! I screamed, laughing hysterically as we were thrown into a gut-dropping loop, our hair briefly stretching toward the ground before the track evened out. After a few more banks and dives, the carts lurched forward as the brakes kicked into gear, causing the restraints to press tightly against our chests. V was gasping for breath, her hands shaking in my own as she finally opened her eyes. She looked shell-shocked, but her pants were still dry, and the girl in front of us breathed a sigh of relief. You okay? I said, still trying to catch my breath. Y yeah just <sighs> need a minute. We slowly worked our way back toward the station where another eager group of riders would soon be taking our places. My free hand seemed to move of its own accord, cupping V's cheek and drawing her face toward my own. Her eyes darted toward my lips and her grip loosened as she leaned closer, but she quickly halted and looked back at me uncertainly. It was just a dumb ride that we'd share a laugh over later, regardless of whether I had held her hand or not but she had put her trust in me, was still trusting me, even now. It was a powerful example of her love, which made it easier for me to nod my head. V leaned in the rest of the way and pressed her lips against my own in a soft kiss. They were chapped from the wind, as my own certainly were, but I didn't care, because they were also warm, and they were safe. When we finally jerked to a halt, the harnesses released their hold, and V pulled away. Thank you, she whispered. I smiled, knowing I was the one who should be thanking her.